So Tesla recently opened their Giga Texas factory, which is apparently the largest factory of any kind in the world, according to their PR anyway. But uh, they had a big opening recently. You probably saw it. Uh, many of your favorite YouTubers were invited. I, I was not one of them. But their plan is to get caught up this year on Model Y deliveries, um, you know, especially the new ones with the 4680 cells, the structural battery and all that. And next year, they're gonna finally go into production on the Cybertruck and the Roadster. There's also one other one they were gonna do. What was it? Oh, right, the Semi. Remember that one? I seem to recall when they first announced the Semi that I put my Joe Stradamus head on and I made the prediction that this was gonna be probably their most successful product. I had my reasons. At the time, and this was a few years back, electric cars were still kind of struggling to gain acceptance in the wider market. And the big reason, one of the big reasons for that is just the higher price of electric cars. But I thought that, um, you know, electric vehicles would be a lot more popular with trucks and commercial applications in general, because, you know, uh, it's a lot cheaper to charge. Maintenance is almost nothing. It would make it a lot more profitable that they would, you know, pay themselves off a lot faster. Plus Tesla showed how they could do this sort of autonomous convoy thing where basically like you would drive one truck and there would be two or three trucks just kind of driving autonomously behind you. This would basically allow independent contractors to haul three times more cargo. Now there's still time for me to be right, but the implementation of this has definitely been a lot slower than I expected. Now everybody seems to agree that the trucking industry is on the verge of major disruption from autonomous technology. Uh, the question is when will this actually start to happen and what will these effects be on society as a whole? That is just one of several questions that I was asked by Patreon members this month, which I'm about to tackle right now. Fishtail starts us off with a pretty easy one. What lavalier mic do you use? I use a Sennheiser EWG4. Right there. This is uh, pretty much the standard. They're sometimes in focus. Sennheisers are not the cheapest mics, but they are kind of the gold standard. And if you go on any film sets, that's generally what you see. He also asked, have you ever studied comedy? I took a couple of classes from the Barbershop Harmony Society. I'm just wondering if you took classes on comedy. I did, um, back in around 2010 to 2012-ish, something like that. I did uh, improv classes. I also did some stand-up comedy classes. Um, Stand-up isn't something you necessarily have to take classes in, although it doesn't hurt. You can learn some basics and whatnot. Stand-up is one of those things you just ha kind of have to do. You just have to get on stage and do it. And uh, forgive the language, but they say sometimes you gotta eat shit. Um, that's just like that's just like part of being a stand-up, just getting up there and eating shit for a while, telling jokes, getting no laughter, not getting up until one in the morning as a as a you know on open mic nights and stuff like that. Um, it's it's pretty rough to get in there. And honestly, one of the reasons I started this channel was because I, I was giving uh, Stand Up a try at the time I was working full time and you would go out to these open mic nights. You don't even get on stage till one in the morning and the only people that are there are the other comics who have all heard your jokes already. And it just, uh, it just wasn't working for me. Um, it's one of those things that like you just really have to just love with every fiber of your being to keep getting up there and doing it over and over again. And I guess I wasn't quite there. Uh, so I kind of was like, hey, why don't I do YouTube? <laughs> so that's the reason why I'm on YouTube now. But I will say the improv classes were life-changing to me, and I would give that advice to anybody. If you have any kind of local comedy club that does improv classes, just go take some classes, because like, um, everything about improv is just kind of learning how to roll with the punches and just kind of like being given something and say yes and and move on from there. And that's what life is. That's what every conversation you have is. Everything in life is an improv. And getting up there and failing over and over again and being able to just laugh at it and move on, it's, it's, a, really, it's a really strong life lesson that I've taken with me ever since then. I, I recommend it for anybody. Cole Parker asked, I recently saw that there was a shortage of truckers. What's the status of self-driving trucks? Otto had a Coors beer pilot a few years back. What happened to that? And what's the current state of automated trucking? Going back to what I was talking about in the intro. Uh, okay, so I found a couple of articles about this uh, Otto beer run that you were talking about. That was back in 2016. And from what I can tell, that wasn't like a regular route that they were running. It was just kind of a, kind of a publicity stunt, I guess. Like it looks like they only did it once and it was a 120 mile route from Fort Collins, Colorado to Colorado Springs. Uh, but this is a good question because that was six years ago. And uh, like I was saying in the intro, I gotta say, I, I thought that automation, automation. <laughs> I thought that if automation was gonna take off anywhere, it would be in the trucking industry, uh, specifically long haul trucking. 
because there's just such a monetary incentive for companies to automate this, um, not just in terms of paying for drivers, but you know, from spillage, from accidents, from insurance costs. Uh, plus, you know, this long haul driving thing is, is done on highways, which is one of the easier things to automate. I mean, Tesla's have been, you know, handling that pretty well for years with autopilot. So yeah, I really thought that it would have taken off a lot more than it has so far. So, so what's the deal on that? Well, the deal with auto was that they were bought by Uber actually just before that, uh, that run in 2016. And in 2017, it looks like they sort of pivoted away from automation and just created an Uber trucking app. In 2018, the co-founder of Auto named uh, Lior, Lior Ron, I think I'm saying that right, uh, he left Auto, and then in 2019, the other co-founder, Anthony Lewandowski, was actually indicted on 33 counts of stealing trade secrets from Google because he had previously worked for Waymo. Um, he had kind of stolen some of their stuff when he left. Um, he was actually pardoned by Donald Trump in his last day in office. But if you go to the auto website today, they seem to be focused specifically on warehouse automation, uh, autonomous mobile robots, or AMRs is what they call them. But as far as the current state of autonomous trucking, yeah, um, there may need to be a full video on this because uh, there's a bit of a rabbit hole here. I will say there's another company that's getting some press right now called Too Simple uh, that did a similar route at the end of last year, actually driving a truck with no human intervention at all from Tucson to Phoenix. But yeah, apparently they've been testing this over the last couple of years. Um, they've driven about 1,800 driverless runs over 150,000 miles, and they have a hope of retrofitting rigs in 2024 for commercial use. It's actually pretty interesting. They talk about how they want to set up basically like a two-tiered system of trucking where driverless trucks will kind of do the long haul deliveries between the cities. And then outside of cities, there will be these little depots where the uh, driverless cars would pull up. Local drivers would then get in and kind of do the last mile through city traffic and the side streets and whatnot. Uh, so like I said, they want to do that by 2024. Um, we'll see how that shakes out. but. For a lot of the reasons that I mentioned a second ago, yeah, I, I think there's a lot that's going to happen in the autonomous trucking space. It's, it's super interesting. And, um, and of course, once that happens, there's a whole lot of questions around like what that's going to mean and putting drivers out of work. Obviously, that's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take many years before it kind of phases into full autonomous driving. Now, one of the arguments for autonomous uh, trucking is that it would lower the cost of goods because it would lower the cost of transporting those goods around. Um, Everything that I've seen recently points to that <laughs> the companies are just gonna pocket the extra money. That seems to be the way that works. Call me a cynic. I'm getting more cynical. So that might actually require some kind of regulation of, uh, of the shipping companies or of the, the companies that are, that are selling the, the products and stuff um, to kind of say like, look, if we're gonna have automation that is uh, putting people out of work and making it cheaper to conduct commerce, then you know, you kind of have to give that savings back to society in some way, especially when there are people now who are looking for, for more work. But will that happen? I've got my doubts. But anyway, yeah, um, there will be a whole video on this. There will definitely have to be a whole video on this. John Regal asked, if you could cameo in any movie, TV show, YouTube, or commercial anything, what would it be? I still fantasize about being on SNL. Saturday Night Live. I was actually born the same year that Saturday Night Live started, and uh, so I always know how, how many years SNL has been on TV by looking at my age. That feels like a sign. But no, I, I grew up with SNL, and uh, I've, I've always wanted to, to host or be on it in some way. Probably too old to actually like be a cast member, but uh, maybe I could be the first YouTuber to host SNL. Actually, Justin Bieber already hosted, didn't he? He was like the first YouTuber. I have dreams, man. I have dreams. John Regal also creatively asked, Oh no, the Tachyon amplifier on the Time Portal machine has overshot its return to null and is now giving you a window to yourself five years into the future. You have a time-delayed window during which you can ask yourself exactly one question and expect to get one answer. What is the question you'd ask your 2027 self? Can I see myself through this portal five years ahead of time? Because if I can, it would probably be something like, have you heard of moisturizer? Seriously, pal. Uh, no, for real, I think I would wanna ask if the mole people would allow me shelter underground from the above dwelling mutant warlords or if I would need to uh, do some kind of ritual sacrifice of some kind in order to join their tribe. I would wanna know that. I predict an eventful next few years.
Robin asked, if the Russians seem to opt so much for poisoning, why do so many seem bungled? And some survive and get thrown in jail, then not poisoned. Is there some weird rule book? I have no idea how to answer this. I mean, I, the whole nature of poisoning as, as, a, as a way of taking somebody out, it's very secretive, it's very covert, and, and it's supposed to be undetectable and, and cause confusion and stuff. I don't know, maybe the, the bungles are, are on purpose to sort of, you know, maybe that's just all part of the subterfuge. Maybe they just suck at it. Brian Beswick asked, are we on the verge of a better boom boom machine? Now he shared with me a link to an article about a new type of engine called a, a bubble through hydrogen engine or a nuclear thermal propulsion rocket. Now it's something that they're working at at Marshall Flight, uh, Space Flight Center. And this, this sounds a lot like the Nerva engine that I talked about in my recent uh, post Apollo video. The idea being that you take pressurized or maybe even liquid hydrogen and you force it through this nuclear furnace that heats it up and it expands and produces a, a, a thrust that way. Um, you know, like I said in my uh, post Apollo video, there probably needs to be a whole video on the, the whole Nerva engine concept. It, it seems to have a lot of promise. It's never really gotten off the ground. And uh, I think one of the reasons why um, outside of any technical issues that they may have been running into. But I know that, that NASA is always a little bit cagey about launching anything radioactive into space because if something goes wrong, it could you know blow up in our atmosphere and spread radioactivity all over the place. I mean, this would literally be a nuclear reactor in space. Um, now they've had RTGs for a while that power things like the New Horizons spacecraft. Um, any kind of space probe that might be traveling so far away from the sun that the, the, the solar power wouldn't be enough to really power it after a certain point. Um, so these things do exist. I don't know if this would have as much or more, probably more, of uh, the, the, the uranium than uh, an RTG would have. But yeah, no, the benefit of it is, is, like I said before, it's kind of like an ion drive in that it can, it can accelerate at a, at a low rate, but for a very, very long time. Um, much much longer than our chemical rockets can. I think there's a lot of promise to it. Um, I'll I'll be keeping an eye on this, but uh, I will I will correct you though. I don't think it's so much boom boom as much as just shh. Mark Hoffman asked, "Is it just me, or does the odor from flatulence seem somewhat exacerbated when expelled underwater? Perhaps something to do with the molecular composition coming into contact and interacting with H2O." I've never really thought about this that much, um, but, okay, so when you fart in an open room, uh, that gas then diffuses into the air around it, so you kind of get this widening circle of air, and it's getting more and more diffuse as it goes around. So assuming there's a little air movement, that's at a rate of about a half a centimeter cube per second. Now, methane has a molar mass of 14, which is slightly lighter than the nitrogen and oxygen that makes up most of our air, so it will kind of float up a little bit more than, uh, than the other side. And if this is your own fart, it would need to cross a good, say, 44 centimeters or so to get from the anus up to the nose, and it's gonna be dissipating that whole way. Now, an average fart is anywhere between uh, 75 to 370 milliliters. So let's just cut the difference. We'll say like 150 milliliters. So by the time that 150 milliliters gets up to your nose, you're only getting just a tiny little piece of that original booth. But if you're underwater, say you're standing in a pool and you got a water level of right about here, maybe you're sitting in a tub and the water level's up to your chest or something like that, and you, you pop one out, and let's just say it does a frontal assault, so it's kind of swinging up this way. So you're getting these bubbles coming all the way up right here, and it is not diluting in the air like a normal fart would. So it's coming right up here, it's popping right here on the surface, and all of that is going straight into your nose. See, what you're getting here is 100% pure stank right into your nose. This is basically like just putting your nose just a couple of inches away from your anus before you cut one. So yeah, I would argue that it's not so much that there's any kind of chemical reaction going on between the methane and the gas or whatever other chemical composition there might be in, in flatulence with the water and the H2O and everything. I think it's just that you're getting a full concentration blast right into your nose as if your, your nose was inches away from your anus. But I haven't thought about this much. And if you thought a lot about how you can do something really good in the world, an easy way to do that is with today's sponsor, Tab for a Cause. 
Time for a cause as a browser extension that'll pay to a charity of your choice every time you open a new tab in your browser. Like how many tabs do you have open on your browser right now? I probably have like 30 open right now. Well, every single one of those could be donating something to a charity. And the best thing is, it's not even your money. It's from ad revenues. So it costs you nothing, just takes minutes to set up. They've got 10 charities to choose from and you're just helping people from that point forward, just doing what you were gonna do anyway. And in case you're wondering, they say that most people generate about $5 a month. Uh, which may not sound like a whole lot, but over time with a lot of different people, this adds up. Uh, together, they've raised over $1.2 million for charities. And there's a lot of great charities to choose from, so just pick whichever one, you know, moves you the most. Anyway, it's simple, it costs you nothing, and it makes a difference. So if that's your thing, check out the link in the description down below. Big thanks to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members who are really helping support this channel, keeping the lights on around here, and just being an awesome resource that I can turn to. I really can't thank you guys enough. I got some new members I need to shout out real quick. We've got Nathan Honey, Grandpa Merlin, Jason McFeeters, Franzilla, Gabby Pop, Ventorins, Martin Merlin, uh, there's two Merlins in here, um, Brad Urick, Sammy D, Rob Nicholas, Alex Bonson, and Odd is the Dawn. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get early access to videos and access to exclusive live streams for only my Patreon and member community. Just hit the little join now button down below this video. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, Google thinks you'll like this one. So you might want to go check that one out or find any of the others on the sidebar that have my face on them. Go check them out. And if you enjoy them, I do invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday and sometimes Thursday. Cool. That's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye opening rest of the week. Stay safe and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.